Hello, welcome to Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Mary Louise Van Atta. One of the things, if you're driving through Salem, there is a beautiful spot, an oasis. It's trees. It's a magically beautiful place, Bush's Pasture Park. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of it is an incredibly beautiful Victorian home, which is known as Bush House. What is it? How did it get to be there? Why is it there? And why do people want to go there from all over the world? So together, we decided to take you on a trip to Bush House and to talk with Ross Sutherland, who is with the Salem Art Association. Hi, Ross. Nice to see you. Thank you. And find out more about it, because it's a piece of Salem history, and it's one of the most beautiful places you'd ever want to see, inside and out. Oh, Welcome to the you. show. Thank you. Tell us all about Bush House. How did it become part of the Salem Art uh, Association? Well, um, I'll give you the, 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 the long and the short of it. Um, uh, Asel Bush came to Salem in the 1850s to start the Oregon Statesman newspaper, which is now the uh, Statesman Journal newspaper. Oh. Had that for a number of years, um, married, had children, and he and his wife um, bought the what is now Bush's Pasture Park in 1860. So, 1860? Yes, it was the home of uh, Reverend David Leslie, and he was connected with um, Jason Lee and the whole Methodist missionary group that came out here. So um, the Bushes moved in in 1860. They had two children already. They had two more in the house, Sally and Eugenia. And um, Mrs. Bush unfortunately passed away in 1863. Mm. And uh, Mr. Bush stayed living in the house, uh, the Leslie house, with four other, with his four children. And uh, he had a household staff. Uh, there he had a uh, cook and uh, probably a laundress and, and different things. So um, time continues. Uh, Mr. Bush starts the Latin Bush Bank downtown in the late 1860s, uh, becomes very successful, and in the 1877 decides he's going to build a house um, there. And um, he was in his mid-50s at the time, and that was kind of considered the time when you would kind of quiet down and enjoy the fruits mm -hmm. of your labor. Um, today, <laughs> uh, you know, 50 is the new 25 or whatever, but anyway. Um, yay. But at that, yay. At, yay, yes. <laughs> but at that time, it was, you know, you were kind of slowing things down. So he built a very, uh, a very nice house. It was actually a farmhouse. I mean, people now think of it as being very grand, and it's grand for mm. a farmhouse, but it is not you know, a, 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 a huge mansion. mansion. The right. mansions Standards. were all over by right. north of the capital, um, and the, those were where the, the real mansions were. And it was a, it was a gentleman farm. So he had cows and chickens and wildflowers and all of that. And so anyway, so um, he stayed. He the house was built. Um, his daughter Sally, who was away at college at that time, moved back, and she lived um, at the house. Uh, with him until he passed away in 1913, and then um, the family gave half of the property to the city as a park. But the um, it wasn't really a catch. But the idea was is that it would go to the city after Sally passed away. Well, nobody expected Sally to live to be in her 80s, um, so it wasn't until the mid 40s that um, the city negotiated the purchase of the other part of the property, and then. Um, um, then Sally passed away, and her, um, and that's when the Salem Art Association, uh, in January actually of 1948, um, made an arrangement with the city council to use the house as as an art museum and an art center. Well, in February, Sally's brother moves back, <laughs> and uh, he's 90, oh and my. so he moves back to the house and actually lives another five years. And so the uh, Art Association is sort of um, <laughs> biding its time. And so uh, he passed away in 53, and it opened as a museum and an art center in um, October of 1953. Wow. And, and then it's, it's been thriving ever it's since. It's been thriving ever since. And then um, fast forward um, 10 years, in 1963, the, the barn, which is on the property, there was a barn, a conservatory, and what is known as a root, a root building, which is actually where they stored all their, their root it's kind of like a root cellar. Yeah. You keep your carrots and vegetables sure. and all that yeah. stuff there. That's something we, we just discovered. Um, and so the barn was gutted by a fire. The mm -hmm. city had equipment there, and they were sort of using it as a maintenance shed. Mm -hmm. um, they moved all of that to a new building, and the uh, city uh, gave the insurance money to the Art Association to kick off a a campaign to to remodel the building into a, an art center. What a treasure it it's is. It's wonderful and it's a, and it's a really fascinating story and so the city really came together um, there was a big fundraiser and it used to be that um, you know it was really 
uh, a lot of people were involved in it. And, and if you look back at the people that were involved, it's sort of like everybody and 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 then well, some. everybody has a story. Everybody has their story. They've either you lived in Salem. You have an ex yes, story about Bush Park, Bush the Salem Art Association, going Salem to the Art playground, fair. going to the art fair, doing all those things. Yeah. Well, why don't we just take a quick peek at your seeing is everything. Seeing is everything. I want to give people a chance to go inside Bush House. Yeah, that'd and be take great. a look at the gardens a little bit. So, and uh, you have a small bit part in this. <laughs> <laughs> we will never tell. Let's okay. watch. So let's watch. <laughs> Bush House Museum is the former home of Asel Bush, the founder of the Oregon Statesman newspaper, now the Statesman Journal, and also the founder of Latin Bush Bank. And he built the house when he was in his mid-50s, 1877-78. Uh, and we're in the bedroom of his oldest daughter, Estelle Bush. And these are toys that are very similar to the type that her daughter, Eugenia, would have played with. It's a very kid-friendly atmosphere. They like to see how other kids lived. The idea of a house that doesn't have a television before computers and that they had to make their own music. This is the formal parlor of Bush House Museum, and one of the features is the Aeolian Orchestrelle, which is a player pump organ that Mr. Bush purchased to celebrate the transition from 1899 to 1900. It was a time of great change, and people were very optimistic about um, the new century and all the things that were going to go on. This is the same idea that was used in early computer punch cards, where you had punch cards that um, told the computer what to do. Kids love this because of the sound. I mean, it's live music, and of course, people always love live music. They also love the mechanics of it. It's a bit of a mystery to them about how it works and why it works and, and all of that. And then, of course, we have the cabinet full of more music, but it's, it's, it's very engaging. Kids, kids really like this. I will now rock the house. Those beautiful, beautiful roses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just that really sums up for me my experience of going there is just seeing everything as a unique experience. What do people get out of it when they they come from all over the world to go there? What do they tell you they get out of it? Well, um, it's it's really kind of wonderful to have people come on tours. I mean, we have people of all ages. We have kids and different people, and people bring different things to that. Um, which sounds a little bit corny, but um, but I've had um, tours where somebody will will walk through the house and tell me about the house they grew up in, um, or you'll have kids that are discovering this stuff, and it's 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 like the phone screwed into the wall 
is is like mesmerizing to them. They, they it's like their their brains can't comprehend the idea of a phone that doesn't go in your pocket. Or I see things that oh, I remember my great grandmother had that in her kitchen, or uh, someone in the family's had that on the mantle, and you didn't know what that was. Well, yeah, and it's really wonderful because um, the it's it's the Bush's house. Um, I mean, obviously, where the the Bush family lived, and the, it's restored to um, around 1913, about a hundred years ago. And so, um, there are people who remember it from their grandparents' house, or um, they've lived in old houses like mm -hmm. that. And since we have um, a, a lot of the original furnishings, you can really talk about about the Bushes. And there's this kind of this um, sometimes an idea that the Bushes were very wealthy, and so they were, you know, they were sort of. Um, I don't want to say snooty, but they were sort of detached, yeah. and which has come kind of completely the opposite. I mean, they're they're very civically minded. They were very involved in a lot of things. Um, Sally was known as Aunt Sally. Uh, she gardened. She loved cats. She um, made sure people that were down on their luck had food and stuff. And so, um, it's it's really about not how the bushes are different from from people, but it's more kind of surprising how they're a lot like we are. I mean, you know, they got up every day, they eat. Um, things were different for them. The stove was different in that, but 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 they're really uh, a lot like um, we are. Um, they really, I mean, in different... They in, really built a lot of the culture of our uh, downtown community. Well, they their, were really well connected, yeah. and the, the, the other, th you know, I mean, that's the thing. Mr. Bush's daughter-in-law helped start the public library, and of course, Mr. Bush was involved in business and, and different things. Sally was in, involved in the arts, and um, and of course, their network of friends, um, Elizabeth Lordney Describer lived right across the street, um, the, the landscape architects. World so, famous. Yes, I mean, they're very well known, and um, so the, they were connected with that, and, and, and a lot of interesting people in Salem, uh, Winifred Bird, there was a, a concert pianist that grew up here, Myra Albert Wiggins. I mean, you know, it's, and so these aren't these aren't sort of famous people on a pedestal. These are people that they sort of knew and hung out with. And, and if you lived in Salem, you may have known. Them yeah, you. Well, yeah, so. and they, right. you know, and um, Elizabeth Lordney Describer would have people over for for garden parties, and you would go, you know, when um, Alice Brown and Keith Powell were married in the '40s, you know, people would go down to their houses. So, so it's it's really kind of. Um, Really, sort of the, so the well, it's nuts our bridge and bolts. that connects us in our community from sort of our recent past uh, to today. Now, I bet there's a lot mm -hmm. of people in our CCTV viewing audience that may have not been out to the house. Uh, can you tell us uh, how to find you and where people can get engaged with this great piece of history? Yeah, sure. Um, the website is, uh, we're a program of the Salem Art Association, great. so we're at um, salemart.org. Wonderful. And the great. phone number there is 503-363-4714. And um, in in addition to the house, there's a conservatory that people can go which through, which has been recently is, upgraded it was and re restored, restored by the yeah. Friends of Bush Gardens. Um, uh, they they headed up the the restoration of that. Um, there's the Bush Barn Arts Center. Mm -hmm. There's also the Rose Garden that you were talking about. Actually, is is not just a bunch of roses. No. It's actually the there's a historic sure. rose collection there of pioneer roses. So if people love roses. Um, they're there. There's some of Sally's roses there. Great it's place really to take photographs. Great place, and yeah. we do. We get everything from baby pictures, uh, <laughs> and I always love it in mm -hmm. the summer. The the limousines pull up, and the quinceanera girls oh, are sure. there with they're their attendants in these beautiful gowns, and their families are there. That's and their special time. They're dancing in the driveway. I mean, it's just it's really wonderful. How lovely. And the thing that's 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 also really touching about it is um, a lot of times people who have means um, build you know, monuments to themselves, or big statues, or mm -hmm. this or that. And I think it's really um, telling of the Bush family that they um, they wanted this to become a park and a place that people would come and use. And the, it, it was in to remember Mr. Bush, but, but what a wonderful way to do that yeah. is to be out, you know, enjoying the outdoors with your family. And if you just want to walk in and for free sit down on one of those beautiful benches and have your lunch there and take it all in, you can do that. Great. Yes. And they Gosh, would love that. That's wonderful. That. Thank you so much. Thank you so well, much. Yeah. Have you yeah. Back. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting us. That's great. We can't get wait to get back out there again. Yep. Yeah. We'll be there. <laughs> all right. Okay. Super. And thank, thank you very you. much for joining us today on Insight. And we'll see you next time.